In today's anywhere economy, consumers are expecting more convenient digital experiences and have a growing desire to engage with companies through remote channels instead of meeting in person. Closing deals and signing agreements in a face-to-face -face meeting may be a thing of the past. And this presents a unique opportunity for organizations to create personalized, high-touch, human-assisted experiences with consumers who prefer those virtual interactions without losing the customer touch that so many customers value. It's about recreating the in-person experience by combining the value of human and digital assistance. I'm Delaney Silva, Product Marketing Manager at OneSpan, and I'm joined by my colleague, Pat Albert from OneSpan Sales Engineering Team. Thanks, Pat, for joining me today. Listen in on our chat where Pat will provide insights on some of the criteria our customers are considering when evaluating video-based e-signature solutions to meet their specific use cases. My first question is on the security aspects of doing business virtually. Pat, why is the security of a video-based e-signature solution so important? And what are customers looking for in a solution to meet their organization's security requirements? Well, people are becoming more and more comfortable using video conferencing especially over the last couple of years. So adding a video-based e-signature service is very convenient. You know, it requires no more traveling to view and sign documents. But our customers, they wanna make sure it's secure. It protects not only themselves, but also their customers. A good example of this is within the auto industry. People are becoming more and more comfortable shopping online. In fact, they'll go so far as to buy a brand new car online. And they're coming to expect doing things remotely um, as an option these days. But this also introduces the risk of fraud. You know, somebody could be faking an identity. So we need to make sure this, this process is secure. So prior to entering a signing ceremony, we can ask a person to authenticate themselves. And this could include using a video, uh, a video ID check, where you ask the person to hold up a government issued ID in front of the camera. And that ID would be interrogated. We would look at the roundness of the corners, the font that's being used and the placement of watermarks just to make sure it was a valid ID. And then we could also ask the customer to put their face in front of the camera and do a biometric comparison to the ID and the person's face. And that would incorporate, of course, biometrics to make sure they are one and the same. And this can all be done prior to entering the signing ceremony. There's many different authentication types available to you, um, all depending on the level of risk with the transaction. So there's many uh, options available to you to make sure that you can use the convenience of remote signing, but also protect against fraud. Our enterprise customers, um, they all care about their brand. They want their customers to trust in their organizations. So they're looking for controls to make sure that you know, the customer is the one signing the document. You know, within a fully integrated video conferencing e-signature service, all of these controls are going to be in place. You know, any less um, secure service could jeopardize your brand and it could break the trust with that customer. And that customer could ultimately go to another organization to do business. It's really interesting that you mentioned level of control and how that goes hand in hand with security. And so level of control is really about restricting the content that can be viewed and accessed by the participants in the virtual signing session. So why is level of control so important for the customers that you're speaking with? Yeah, again, it's very important. Um, the level of control again, protects not only the customer, but the organizations. You wanna make sure that you're only sharing the agreements that have to be signed. That's one aspect. Um, some people using traditional uh, video conferencing platforms don't know enough to share a specific document, then they might share their entire desktop. And that would expose sensitive information. They might have other applications that are open that they shouldn't be sharing. I'd, I'd like to compare this to an in-person signing ceremony. You know, if you wanted somebody to look at a document that was on your screen, you wouldn't ask them to walk around the desk because you might have other applications that are open that you don't want that customer to see. So make, you wanna make sure that you're only sharing the, the documents that have to be reviewed and signed. And you also wanna make sure that the transfer con of control takes place, that you're transferring the control to the signer so that they have control of the keyboard when they're signing the documents. And of course, within any type of an e-signature platform, you're gonna get these documents that are, they're gonna come back completed. You're not gonna have incomplete transactions. They're gonna be signed and initialed in every location. There was a recent survey, it's not just me saying this, but the World Insurance Report survey came back from 2021 and they said that half of the insurance agents and brokers that they talked to said that they needed a collaboration tool that has screen sharing as part of that. This allows them to effect effectively assist all of their customers so that they have a chance to review the documents prior to signing. You explained there how video conferencing can help brokers and agents to 
uh, visually explain products and services to their customers, especially when it comes to uh, guiding them through an agreement or a purchase. So what about compliance? What are customers looking for uh, in, in a solution to ensure they're meeting compliance requirements? Oh, definitely. Yeah, regulated industries are subject to undergo audits. So they have to rely on the evidence to demonstrate you know, that proper steps were taken. So how would you handle a dispute if it arose today? If you weren't using an electronic signature, you're, you don't really have a lot of audit trail. I'm um, using a one span sign. You have a, an audit trail, we call it an evidence summary that is available to you. And it's a list of every event that takes place during a signing ceremony. And this document is available in a PDF format. So it's available for long-term -term storage. So you can store that with the completed documents. And it's a very complete log of every single event that occurred. Every single event has a date and time stamp. It has a list of the actor who is performing the action, such as signing a document or viewing a document. And it contains even the IP address. So you could actually use that for geolocation if necessary. And it's not just the um, evidence summary that contains this type of audit trail information, but the, actually the signed document itself has got a digital signature. It's cryptographically sealed to prevent any type of modification to the document after it was signed. But inside of that digital signature, you can also see the date and time that that a signature was applied. And again, the IP address of the person that was applying that. Um, a previous ex uh, example that we had like prior to e-signatures is customers would come back and have a dispute saying that a specific paragraph wasn't in a document. And that could be easily um, proven. You know, if you had a completed document, you can, you can point to it and say, yeah, it was right in this, this paragraph here. This is the, the paragraph in question. But with the new technology, with video sc uh, screen sharing, a new dispute could arise. You know, a customer could come back and say that I wasn't the one that was in control of the keyboard and I didn't sign that. So you want to make sure that the audit trail actually has the transfer of control as part of the audit trail. If, if, this, avail if this was not available, how would you prove that, you know, that the person that was in control, you'd have to go back to their words. So the evidence summary is very important that it has, you know, the, the events listed one by one. So you actually know who is performing the action within each one of those. And what about ease of use? How important is that to our customers? Well, ease of use is very important because that directly impacts the adoption. So it has to be not only easy for the signers, but also for the senders. A good example of this is within um, our enterprise banking customers in specifically wealth management. They spend a lot of time building relationships with their customers. So they don't wanna spend a lot of time preparing documents for signature and then following up on missing information. So providing a virtual meeting for e-signatures offers a unique opportunity to you know, provide a personal service in a remote setting. It also allows them to boost their efficiency because they can review the documents, but they can also provide um, an, a channel to upsell or cross-sell. They can talk about other products and services that their company offers. So again, the time is very important. You know, that you want to eliminate or reduce the amount of time preparing and also following up on uh, missing information because that allows them to spend more time with the customers in this remote, you know, face-to-face, -face, if you want to call it that, setting. Providing all of this functionality within one service is critical. Other platforms might force you to use multiple systems, you know, one for emailing, another web conferencing platform, and then of course the e-signature platform. So a fully integrated service is very important. It makes it very easy to initiate the e-signature transaction and the virtual meeting all within a few simple steps. And just like the solution needs to be easy for users, it also needs to be easy for and customers, right? Especially with uh, the rise in consumer demand and expectations around virtual interactions and being able to conduct business with organizations remotely. So how are our customers responding to this challenge to deliver the very best customer experience to their customers? Well, the new environment can be an opportunity, an opportunity to interact while still providing a personal service. So customers see this and they're, they're attracted to the, you know, to the convenience that it provides, you know, eliminating any type of traveling and face-to-face -face meetings. So using video and screen sharing, it can elevate the entire customer's experience in an innovative way. So providing human interaction in this hybrid model, it's, it's increasingly important. Um, there's standard remote signing. It doesn't give you a chance to you know, review a document and ask questions. So having a, a video conferencing room allows you to review the document, point out specific paragraphs. Without it, it's, it could lead to confusion and cause delays. So a virtual signing ceremony allows for customers to get their qu questions answered immediately and sign the documents completely. Providing a human touch when interacting with customers digitally is 
really one of the main advantages, right, for opting to a video-based e-signature solution. Um, so what are some of the questions companies are asking when evaluating these types of solutions that will help them provide a secure and exceptional customer experience to their end customers? So our customers are asking questions to make sure that the service has a number of features. It allows them to build loyalty with their customers through a connected experience. They desire a seamless experience for ease of use. So it has to be easier for the signers and the senders, and it should allow them to quickly and easily sign uh, documents without any type of a training. And this of course allows for higher completion rate. They want to eliminate manual follow-ups. They still want to provide a personal service similar to an in-person meeting. And they want to continue to build trust uh, between the organization and their customers. And the way they do this is to maintain a fully branded service, you know, something that's white labeled, not just co-branded, but fully white labeled. So they want to make sure that the emails are coming directly from their, or their organization and not from a third party. And they also want to make sure that the message contained within that email is their message and their logos are the ones being presented. So customers today, they're very wary of phishing attempts. So if an email comes from a third party, they're going to be very hesitant to click on that email. They might suspect it's a phishing attempt, or it might even get blocked by a spam filter. So having a white label service throughout the entire process is very important. You know, organizations have built a level of trust with their customers and adding a third party could introduce hesitation. So seeing your organization's name and logo through the entire signing process helps maintain that level, and level of trust. So in summary, I would say the four major categories are ease of use, that it has to be fully integrated, secure, and a fully white labeled service. Thanks, Pat, for taking the time to chat with me and sharing your valuable insights on some of the questions our customers are asking when evaluating video-based e-signature solutions. As we heard, not all video-based e-signature solutions in the market meet the criteria that we just went over. So it's really important to do your due diligence to assess this criteria for your use cases that require human and digital assistance to complete mediated agreements in a convenient way with your customers. For more information on how one span signed virtual room meets the criteria for secure, easy to use virtual customer experiences and signing, visit onespan.com.